Good morning, guys. How's it going? It is four in the morning. Currently, I'm in uh, Chicago. This is the first video clip I'm ever making. I woke up because I'm very excited to head to Nashville. Uh, Ravi and I and the CP Solvers group is visiting Meharry Medical College. So the excitement has me away. I think I'm about to go for a run. And what you hear in the background is some uh, country music, which I, I love this. Um, I believe it's called Tennessee something. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure, but I've been listening to it for some time. Well, anyways, I'm about to go for a run. I will catch you later. Run complete. That was an amazing session. The hotel has a really nice gym. And during my run, I was thinking about, you know, how often we want to try something new, but we're afraid that we might fail at it or that we might not be good at it. And truthfully, you don't need to be the best at something to enjoy it. I mean this wholeheartedly. Right now, I bought my first camera and I'm videotaping for the first time, which reminds me I have to do the intro as well, but I'm not afraid to fail. And I'm looking forward to learning all of the complexities that come with operating a camera and taking pictures. Um, I definitely have a huge amount of respect for photographers, and um, but I'm excited to learn. And I know I'll never be the best at it, but I think I'll enjoy it and I'll be able to capture memories that will last for a lifetime. I'm back up again. Luckily, I was able to sleep a couple hours. I'm excited. Right now, I'm about to go meet Dr. Robert Hirschdick. Um, he's an associate program director at Northwestern and is recognized by many as one of the best clinician educators in the United States. Thanks so much for being, taking the time to be here. It's a very unprofessional uh, video camera, but uh, I wanted to ask you, Dr. Hirschdick, what would be your advice to clinician educators in terms of being both a teacher and a clinician? Manesh, let me separate that into two things, starting with the educator part. Uh, I think in internal medicine we deal with a lot of facts, and I think students and trainees are overwhelmed with the sheer number of facts. I think a talented educator can say, you know what, let's look at the two or three key facts for this condition. And everyone should know these three key facts. And beyond that, that's you know worth accumulating over months and years. But everyone should walk around with three key facts about pulmonary embolism, about hyponatremia, about atrial fibrillation, for example, and, and then that serve as the basis for discussion from beyond that. So I think talented educators are able to distill down to those key facts and help disseminate them. Wonderful. And then any advice to the clinician? What has worked for you in improving your skills as a clinician? Uh, this will not sound that unique, but I think it's uh, you know, due diligence, paying attention to what patients are telling you, number one, paying attention when you do a physical exam. And believe me, I've been there when you're listening to someone's heart saying, I wonder how many more admissions are going to come in later. Actually pay attention to what you're hearing at the time. And then when you think about what's going on and you think, well, am I going to order this scan or this test to say how are the results going to impact my thinking and if the answer comes back it's not really going to change what I'm thinking then that's a really good reason to not order that test. Thank you so much Dr. <laughs> Dr. Manesh it's been a pleasure. Good luck with your future video endeavors because there's a lot of room for growth here. <laughs> Good morning. It's about time to um, go get a workout. It's around 4.30 in the morning, central time, which would be around 5.30 Eastern time. Have a little bit of the Titanic Pandora station in the background. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is gonna really help me with, uh, with the pump that I'm striving to achieve. We're gonna do some cardio, and then gonna go wake Robbie up but knowing him, he's probably already up, having solved a couple of cases. 
and um, we're going to have a nice breakfast, prepare for a presentation, and then head to Meharry Medical College. I'm super excited. Let's go CP Solvers. <gasps> oh, hey, Robbie, how's it going? <laughs> I just did this, by the way. <laughs> and it's oh, amazing man. what a camera does to one's psyche. <laughs> Here I am, showing God. up, wanting to give you a hug, and now I feel paralyzed. <laughs> I'm pretend that it's not there. Ooh, Robbie, let me see if I can uh, change this a little bit. Okay, tell me a little bit about your shirt. I haven't even hugged you yet. Ooh, yeah, give me my hug. <laughs> oh, I was supposed to run at you like a dog, huh? <laughs> what is this? Let me give you a quick hug. Oh, that's yeah, just man. Look, at, look at this guy. Show him in here. Look at this guy. Look at what he's doing. Hemoptysis. Allergic. What? I can't even read it, man. See, this is how I know you're a great doctor. I can't read anything that you're saying. All right, I gotta give him a hug now. All right, time for. Well, I'm not supposed to start. The so, in my world, you're the only person without hair. Period. And uh, when I walked in to this restaurant, um, you can't show your friends in this. I was like, man, Reza looks so different. He looks so much more buff and athletic. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And I get closer and closer and closer. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> there are two people. <laughs> so you can say Paul, it's okay. No, it's okay. I don't know, I feel, like, I feel like it's judging. I know. I'm just describing, I'm not judging. Um, so uh, that moment of like, oh wow, I'm a horrible human being. I am judging people by the look on their face. was very powerful. Um, but you still are the only bald person. <laughs> awesome, okay. We're gonna get a lot of these interjections from Robbie this trip. Hey Robbie. What, what did you order for breakfast, man? Um, a very healthy egg. What did you get? <laughs> frittata. frittata. Uh, I got the exact opposite of an egg frittata. I got Nutella French toast, which is healthy living, friends. What is it? What's the thing that you said? Oh my god, on Twitter, what is it? Stay hungry? Never stay hungry. <laughs> To get it so Robbie, here. I'll have to stand in front of you. Guys. <laughs> Shit, I'm looking right at the sun. Wait, you forgot the tripod again. Oh, I did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You know, it folds all the way down to this much, <laughs> but I forgot to bring it. Where are we right now, Great we, uh, we are at Mahari <laughs> Clinic. What did you get? <laughs> I have no idea. All right, cool. That way. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Mahari yeah. Clinic. Oh, here. <laughs> no, you got a point right Oh, that way. That here. way. No, no, if you look at the screen. Oh, wait. Robbie is new to the technology. Yes, yes, I'm a, <laughs> look, I'm look, a 20 look. cent. Do you see the screen? Um, yeah, I can't because the sun's right <laughs> in my face. <laughs> Wait, let me uh, ask you, Robbie. Yeah. How's your day going so far? Excellent, man. Excellent. W what's on the agenda for today? Okay, so today, in all seriousness, today is going to be a great day because we um, get to hang out with the folks at Mahari College. We are going to hang out at Morning Report. Mahari Medical College. Mahari Medical College. <laughs> We're not at the university. Yeah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, If only I had known. And we're hanging out with the folks at um, Hari Medical College. We're actually right in front of the clinic, right there. Um, that was quick. I, but you know why I was quick? Because I didn't even show them the sign. I just showed them some random building. But it's uh, okay. So today, Reza and I get to do um, get to hang out at Morning Report um, and then do a uh, clinical problem solving case, and then a four hour, three hour, four hour. We should probably should know this. Three hour or four hour? I think uh, three and a half. Some, split, split three the and a half hour workshop with. <laughs> Uh, with those same folks. Yeah. Amazing. We're so excited. So grateful to Meharry Medical College. And uh, hopefully it'll be a hit. On three, go CP solvers. Go CP solvers. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> Alright, well, we'll stop now, man. We'll stop while we're ahead. One, Did I even hit the record two, button? Oh yeah, three. three. Go, go CP, CP solvers. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Shanai Nadine. Hi. <laughs> it's such a privilege to meet you. I was hoping you could um, tell the audience a little bit about Meharry Medical College and like what attracted you to this institution. And by the way, I, Dr. Nettie is a chief resident here at Meharry Medical College. So I went to Meharry for medical school, but I was actually born at Meharry. Heard about Meharry a lot when I was little. Um, so I basically grew up hearing about Meharry in other um, towns and countries that I lived in. Um, what brought me back to Meharry is the people. Uh, Meharry does a fantastic job of bringing people together that are family members. So my family are a lot of my medical school classmates and my residency classmates. Uh, Meharry is unique in that there's a lot of doctors that look like me. 
um, but she don't see you very many times um, or anywhere else. And when I go to fellowship, by now I'm not going to see you there too. And it's nice because you get this camaraderie, but you also get a community of people that you can talk to later on that not only look like you, but also think like you in, in a medical atmosphere. Um, Meharry is unique in that, you know, we have the salt wagon, so I'm sitting, I'm standing in front of the salt wagon, so our salt wagon story is that um, the Meharry brothers actually helped to fund the um, college. They um, were helped by two black men. Um, when their salt wagon basically had shut down. So later on, as a way of saying thank you, they say, you know, if you need our services, we will help you. So later on, the two brothers that helped him said, hey, you know, we would like to start a school where we'll bring in black doctors and hopefully we'll be able to help the community, which is what I plan on doing later on. And he said, sure, what do you need? And so monetarily, he helped us at least set up the school. So that's the story of Meharry, you know, it's a fantastic place. I hope you all get to explore it, see it. It's very historical and lots of great people. And Dr. Nettie, I can't tell you how honored I am to meet you. You are post night. I want the audience to know that she's been up all night taking care of patients, and I she look stayed hazard. here. No, you look great, <laughs> and she stayed here to uh, host us. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, really sad that Brian initially asked to your camera is that I'm like, oh no, because it's very ironic. Watch this again. I'd be like, I'm so glad you recorded it. I have a message to tell you. Tell me, tell it for everyone. Um, this morning, I will not be able to reason clinically. <laughs> I may just fall asleep. I'm excited. I'm excited. We're, did you tell them what we're doing? No, I didn't. You didn't please. tell them? No. We're doing, uh, we're doing morning report at Mary. Um, Mary Medical. Um, we hung out with the <laughs> Dude, I love how you remember that despite being half asleep. Yeah. That, uh, that, uh, You're that, a legend. <laughs> Um, oh, don't yes. get any closer to the camera, your face is exploding on that. This is a good distance. That's a good distance, but I need uh, you to... Did you order the Uber? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like straight, straight on to business, man. Let me see, actually. Is it here? Hey, what happened yesterday? Who left their phone in the lift car? And what do you say about, like, the... Like, honestly, like, how amazing people in Nashville are. Oh, my God. It's absolutely What incredible. happened yesterday? So let me tell you the great? whole story. I'll tell it objectively. So, Reza... <laughs> no, no, no. I want them to judge how nice people are. And I don't want to take the story. So, Reza left his... Um... <laughs> Why am I telling the story? Why are people telling the story? <laughs> um, okay, fine. I'll tell the story. So, um, Reza left his phone in a lift car. And, um, it didn't take long for him to realize it, that it was there, localized lesion. <laughs> and whose fault was it that I left it there? Uh, mine. No, you're too kind. <laughs> I forced Reza to drop his phone and sent it into the lift car. Um, but, you know, the cool part is, it actually wasn't too much of a pain to find, you know, it was a little bit of work, but the lift people were very kind in connection with the driver. And the driver was like 30, 40 minutes away. And so Reza kind of half-heartedly offered to go there and then was quickly like, how much can I pay you to come here? <laughs> That's what you did, you snuck in and like, oh, so I'll come to you, actually, how much can I pay you? Please. But the guy was like, instantly, the guy, who's on speaker, the guy was like, no, 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 just give me, give me the price of gas or something, I forget yes, what he said. Precisely. Give me the price of gas and I'll come at 9.30 on, on a weekday uh, and drop this off from like, you know, a decent distance away. And the guy <laughs> came in. And of course, uh, Reza outdoes his kindness by giving him more than uh, uh, gas. I, because of humility, I won't tell you the exact uh, <laughs> amount. But um, it was two people, two people, random people, never met before probably, his lies colliding and treating each other with like ridiculous kindness and trying to outdo each other in terms of who was kinder to the other person. Um, and I, my role in the story is I just sat there and watched it. <laughs> it contributed nothing to it except my phone. My phone. <laughs> hey, hey, Robbie, what yeah. did we have to eat that night? I like oh, 10 p.m. Okay. So then, of course, Reza and I had to hang out and debrief about these acts of kindness and the whole day, an incredible day, actually, at uh, Meharry. And so we had um, a very healthy salad. And <laughs> we had some chicken wings. Hot chicken. Hot wings? Hot chicken? Or hot chicken wings? What? Come on, man. I'm asking. No? I have no idea. Okay, it's hot chicken plus minus wings. And then some delicious, very crispy ketchup filled fries. <laughs> glorious. All right, Robbie. Thank you so much for the update. We're going to get some coffee in that blood system of yours. All right, let's do it. <laughs>
he is recording me, <laughs> telling him, telling you about him. This weird, complex uh, dimension that's happening. It's so nice to meet you. I can't wait to uh, get to know you, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to actually, over the course of the 45 minutes that we have together, uh, get to know everyone's name. Um, this is my cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's kidding, true. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Reza Manesh. So, um, Reza is a clinician educator and a hospitalist at Johns Hopkins um, in Baltimore. Um, he did his residency at UCSF in internal medicine, and um, there he developed a passion for clinical reasoning. And um, I'll keep this brief because I could take this, um, take this on forever. That passion <laughs> for clinical reasoning uh, led him to uh, found what's called the Clinical Problem Solvers. If you've not heard of it, um, it is a clinical reasoning podcast. Um, that uh, we both work on together. Thanks so much. And, and are you guys okay being on camera? No, that's okay. I won't do that. <laughs> um, all right. Talk of a previously normal aorta or an abnormal aorta. Meaning, is this an acute on chronic disease or is this an isolated acute disease? And that informs your differential diagnosis significantly. Only a few diseases can dissect a completely normal aorta. Okay? And the question here is, this is previously normal or AB normal? And this, to me, looks like a very big aorta to begin with. This is the dissection flap. But look at the sheer size of the aorta here. This is acute on chronic disease. This person has had an asymptomatic aortopathy for a long period of time. And today, 30 minutes before coming to the ER, they dissected. This didn't start today. This started years ago. Okay? So the first question is, is this, is this dissection on the aortopathy or dissection without the aorta? Hello, hello, hello. Well, we are almost done with our trip at Meharry Medical College. You got some music in the background, because I just had an amazing session with the mathematician at Robbie Ja. Um, I'm about to hit the gym one last time before I head to Baltimore. I'm gonna get a, a run in, and then at noon, we met this faculty member who is Persian, and he's taking us for some Persian food, which of course I'll record, so I'm really excited. And then tonight, flying back to Baltimore, which is bittersweet, because I had to say goodbye to my brother, Robbie. Anyways, time to go get the run. Let's do it. So we, we have our lovely host, Miranda. Thank you so much for inviting us. Thank you for coming. It's been such an incredible experience. We cannot thank you enough. And of course, we got the mathematician, Robbie Jia. He's a little tired. He has a headache. Yeah, I, and he's I, about to go in. And then we have my uh, fellow Persian. Uh, thank you so much. It's been such a privilege meeting you. And I told the audience that we were going to have Persian food. And my mom is very happy right now. <laughs> But I was hoping you can describe what we have in front of us right here. So, I mean, this is the name, I don't know what's the English name, we call it Kashke Bademjun, which is a combination <laughs> of eggplant, it's 100% veggie and vegan and whatever you want it to see because there's nothing there to be against. And we have uh, Mastukhyar here, which is a combination of must, which is yogurt, and khyar, which is a cucumber. Mm -hmm. But this is a Persian cucumber, not those that you make the you know salad like you know big size there. So um, then we have some um, feta cheese and some vegetables and a little butter for the rice, which is coming next. <laughs> and we have du. Du, and also we have. Anti-gout medication. <laughs> <laughs> Our this nephrologist. Is sumac, and this is anti-gout because it's just declined the uric acid really? more than the uh, allopurinol. Really? Wow. And this is our Persian type of, you know, job that with every type of kebab we put this one on top of it. And you know that the red meat is the main cause of hyperuricemia, right? Yeah. I'm a nephrologist. So this is actually a game. So traditionally the old Persian people use the somak. Many of them they don't know why, but this is the reason. Because if you put this one on your kebab, red kebabs, you're not gonna get a flare of gout. Wow. Trust me, I tried it and it's never happened. <laughs> so the dupe, you're asking about yes. the dupe. This is a concentrated yogurt with mint, 
with salt and with added water. It's like, you know, natural lorazepam. <laughs> <laughs> you drink it and you need to have a place to find a warm shoulder to get a nap. <laughs> you cannot find warm shoulder, you really gotta yeah, just get your jacket on and just go a place and get there. Thank you so much, Alana. Just, uh, just before it gets cold, we'll start eating. Okay. Oh, yeah. You don't need this one, right? No. Because I really need this one. And I wanted to start with Marina first. Okay. And Rabbi next, then the last is going to be Rezo because he knows those stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so they call it Kabob Kubide. Thank you. They call it Kabob Steak or Kabob Bar. They call this one chicken kebab without bone and this is the one that you have your hands on and eat it like this. Okay. This is the ginger kebab <laughs> with bone. Just watch the bone. I'm going to give you some bone. So this is for you to make it. Awesome. Okay, let's go um, I just wanted to say something. Robbie and I um, have been to many places. Nashville, the Harry Medical College has been a very special visit for us. And I just want to highlight for all of the listeners the power of meeting strangers. You guys started out as strangers to us. Hello. And then we shared this meal. And to hear your story, Albanadir, and I, I'm not going to reveal any of it, almost brought tears to my eyes. Oh my and your son's name being Omi, meaning hope, is so amazing. And Miranda, to hear the impact you're having locally, it just makes me wonder, what am I actually doing? Like, you guys, I, I, I know I'm speaking for Robbie and myself, we're, we're just so thankful and grateful for having the opportunity to have met you. I mean, the Persian food helps too, <laughs> to make me happy. <laughs> but I just want to say, like, for anyone listening to this, talk to people, hear their stories, because you will be moved. Thank you so much. So, Hello. Robbie, this yeah. concludes our visit to Meharry Medical College. College. Right. And it was such an amazing You're trip. You were really close. Right? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, my flight is in 10 or 15 minutes. I got a board, unfortunately. But can you just tell the audience, like, what were the highlights of this visit for you? Oh, I'm going to miss... You know, honestly, it's hard to highlight a visit like this. It's like a big blur of just joy. I think the things that stand out at the top, even though it's hard to like, really single things out, is the incredible hospitality and kindness of the people here. I mean, the moment that we w went to Nahari College medical college for the first time and stood between uh, the medical uh, building and the ER and just were surrounded by such incredibly kind people. This place is a legacy like no other place in this country and we can feel that when we step in. And I think that when, with that as the foundation, um, being able to do um, diagnosis and clinical reasoning with um, similarly passionate people is, is a dream come true. We got to do three cases and learn from, you know, hang out with medical students to attendings to residents and hang out with this guy. Uh, it was a joy. I couldn't have asked for better. This is a concluding Clinical Problem Solvers visit. I have nothing to add to what Robbie said, which is usually the case. And I just want to give you a hug. Let me give <laughs> these guys some love. Yeah, give them some love. Uh, yeah. Safe travels, okay? Safe travels, okay. There you go. I gotta get some Diet Coke. I can't believe I went through all that effort <laughs> to not be able to get any coke. Anyways.